Hi, and welcome to The Property Show. Whether you're searching for a dream home, your next investment, up-to-date market insights, and trends shaping the sector, then sit back, this is your show. Our focus this week takes us to the Mount Kenya region, a melting pot of culture, famous for farms, ranches, game parks and wildlife conservancies, in addition to hosting the British Army Training Ground. Real estate activities nearly doubled over a three-year period. On the expert segment, we highlight a mobile platform bringing simplicity to a complex world of construction. iBuild is an end-to-end -end platform that facilitates the people who are doing construction. On it, you're able to get contractors, you're able to get suppliers. Later on, we'll catch up with locally made rugs and toilet seat covers on the accessory spot. I can tell you, Mount Kenya region has something for everyone. Let's get started. The property market has shown resilience, with Nanyuki region recording an average rental yield of 4.7% for the residential sector, 7.6% in the commercial sector, and a capital appreciation of 4.7% in the land sector. We have the highest life expectancy in Kenya, 72 years. Uh, compared to the national average of 67. So if you want to live long, uh, come and live in Laikipia. But that's not all. The Laikipia economy is one of the fastest expanding economies in Kenya, growing at nearly 9% per year in real terms. And you can see it in all our towns. You can see it in Nanyuki. You can see it in Weumirirye. You can see it in Matanya. You can see it in Nyahururu, you can see it in Rumuruti, you can see it in Sipiri, you can see it in Kinamba, you can see it in all our towns, you can see it in all Jabet. In some of these centers, uh, real estate values are doubling every three or four years. So for instance, if you go to all Jabet, land prices for a plot, uh, 80 by 100, have doubled from 350 to more than 750 in the last two years, in Sipiri, um, at Weumiririe, at Naibol. So we want to encourage all Kenyans, uh, do come out to Laikipia and witness and be part of the growth that is taking place. Real estate activities nearly doubled over a three-year period, from 3.2 billion to 4.9 uh, billion in just a couple of years. In addition, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at the value of construction, again, more than doubled from 2.7 billion to 5.6 billion, uh, again, in a period of uh, three years. So, investing in Laikipia, you're sure that you will get your money's worth. Let me bring it home with increased real estate activities driven by devolution, tourism, positive demographics, as well as the presence of British Army training units. Nanyuki continues to be a hotspot inspiring a new investment cycle. We have some comparable advantages, that is the location of Nanyuki town, it is the gateway to the frontier. If you are going to Isiolo, if you are going to Madeira, Marsabe, even some people prefer to pass through Nanyuki on their way to Meru. So in terms of location, Nanyuki and Laikipia in general, it is adequately 
located. Number two, the, uh, the proposal by the government to do a dual carriage from Keno to Sion, that is also a potential investment. Uh, when you go to the other side of Laikipia West, that is Umruti. That is that road that connects Umruti to Mara. It has opened up that frontier. Apart from that, as a county government, what we are doing, we are providing a very conducive environment for private investors to life. Like for example here today, this expo was being organized by a private entity. But we came in as a government, we intervened, and that's why you see it is this successful and it is this massive. Because as a government, we know and we are sure that if private sector are well facilitated, the business environment is conducive. There will be a general growth, our young people will get jobs, and there will be more income to our pocket. Uh, and the result is the economic growth to, to like keep here. Number two, uh, we are the home to the innovations. I know you have gone round, you have seen the mass, massive innovation, and as a government, we have a very elaborate uh, like keep innovation program that supports, nurture, and support these innovators to make sure they have scaled, they are in production, and also they are in the market. In terms of investments, I think it's not being proud, but like Ipe, I think it offers a very good platform for, for investors to have. The third uh, investment is tourism. Uh, as a government, we, and also the private stakeholders, we are working toward marketing like Ipe as a tourism destination. Uh, within 10 minutes, all the big five, so you will see all the big five, the large scale, the culture, the climate, the hospitality of the people, to name just a few. That is the ingredients of good tourism. So we are saying, if you want to invest in tourism, the best place to be is saying like keep it. Today, we highlight investment opportunities at the Mount Kenya region you can put your money on. The first investment option are modern detached three-bedroom bungalows. This development comes with spacious bedrooms surrounded by amenities ideal for a modern family living, Snowview Estates. Snowview Estate is located 700 meters off the Nyeri Nanyuki Road, 6 kilometers from Nanyuki Town. The project consists of detached three bedroom bungalows sitting on an eighth piece of land. The amenities include a large living and dining area, windows letting in lots of natural light, kitchen with a pantry for storage, as well as granite countertops, master ensuite bedroom, a common bathroom shared by the second and third bedroom. Other features include piped water and a borehole, an individual backyard, children's playground, an area allocated for a shopping center as well as a car wash. For security, there is a 24-hour manned gate plus perimeter wall. The project is selling off plan at 8.5 million Kenya shillings. a gated community of two levels of four bedroom maisonettes. This exclusive private development comes with a large living and separate dining areas, a fully fitted kitchen and private individual gardens. For investors, this is an ideal investment for long and short rentals. Here is more. Mukuria Gardens is located in Mothaiga, two kilometers from Nanyuki town. This gated community of two levels, four bedroom machinettes consists of four intimate units. The amenities include large living room and separate dining area, a fully equipped kitchen with a fridge, cooker, 
microwave, plus utensils and pantry. Four bedrooms all en suite, a common washroom, Wi-Fi internet connection, as well as TV. Other features include four parking slots per house, 20,000 litres of water storage tanks, electricity and backup, 24-hour manned gate, an electric fence, and an alarm system and boilers for heating water. We all know you can never go wrong investing in site and service land schemes in a controlled gated community. Next, Watten Gardens, a project in close proximity to prestigious holiday homes and resorts. Watten Gardens is a controlled gated community of quarter acre site and serviced land schemes located in Nanuki. Developments in close proximity to Watten Gardens include Mayan Villas, Swara Ranch Holiday Homes, Cobbs Resort, as well as Ox Energy. Amenities include fenced site and service land scheme with a common gate, electricity and water on site, good access road, three kilometers from the Tarmac Road. The next stop takes us to Peaks Hotel, a unique destination for business, tourists and family travelers with beautiful views of what Nanyuki has to offer. When we uh, came to Nanyuki um, back in 2015, uh, we started looking around because we, were, we felt that, first of all, uh, we, we felt Nanyuki had opportunities. And uh, we um, stayed in Nakuru, we have stayed in other towns of the country, we come from uh, uh, Meru here. And so uh, when we came here, we uh, looked around and we saw opportunity in the hotel uh, industry to be specific. And so uh, that's how we ended up actually now making a decision that uh, the uh, hotel would be a viable option for us to venture into. Nanyuki is a very, very interesting place, very, very unique in its own way in this country, if I may say. It's like a melting pot of uh, cultures, of peoples, and uh, uh, not to mention that uh, it's uh, at the middle of the northern uh, counties uh, who have to uh, transit through Nanyuki. And therefore, if you look at the kind of traffic which is building up now with the counties taking shape, uh, you can see obviously Nanyuki does not only serve its unique residents and visitors, uh, it also serves people coming uh, from either way, from uh, the upper parts of the country in the Nairobi area to the, to the northern uh, counties. And therefore, so when we looked at that, we first of all, the choice was uh, the location. And we chose this particular place and we were lucky to be able to get this uh, uh, plot because then we would be able to kind of uh, serve a cross-section of the people we thought would be uh, interested in our services. And that's apart from, of course, the, the, the residents, the tourists, uh, both local and uh, foreign, who come either to climb down to Kenya, um, either to visit the various uh, game reserves around here, or transiting through here to Meru National Park, Shaba, and uh, the Samburu. So uh, that's what we did. And then the other thing is that then you can also see there is need for a business-oriented hotel also in this area. Uh, we've got quite a few in town, but we don't have enough as yet. And that's where I now uh, we also thought it was that balancing act to be able to cater for all those interests. We have got uh, the bar and the restaurant. Uh, we have got uh, rooms, we have got a uh, uh, conference facility which uh, um, can house up to about 100 people without uh, uh, squeezing too much. Then we are developing the transit uh, lounge, we call it transit lounge, where we really would want to serve fast foods. 
uh, for people who can't come in to enjoy our other facilities. And that one is taking shape. So uh, after that, we have got the rooftops. And the rooftops, uh, we call it the Summit Restaurant. It's a very unique place for now for people who want to be able to see the scenery uh, offered uh, by this very panoramic environment where you're able to see the uh, Laikipia Plains, you'll be able to see the Loldaiga, you'll be able to see all the way to the Abedes, and the beautiful Mount Kenya sitting just ahead of us here. Uh, so um, uh, those are the facilities which we, we offer. This is our standard room. And uh, the standard room, uh, as the word goes, is uh, the, where the bulk of our rooms are. Uh, we have got um, 32 of these rooms. Common to all the rooms is that we have got the floors which are wooden uh, to make sure that we take care of the cold. We don't use tiles inside the rooms. And then uh, you also see equally the furniture is simple and artistic. Um, the bed, uh, all of them, we have been able to make them to specification with a bamboo orientation. The coffee table, they are normally the two uh, bedside the tables and lamps. This bed normally uh, for all the standard rooms, it's a uh, six by five. Uh, the other rooms, of course, you can some of them are split with the uh, six by three. And then you have got this, which is normally a dressing table. And the dressing table, what happens, we have got the information pack there. And uh, this also, people use it very conveniently for uh, reading or using their computers or laptops. We have simple TVs so that people can be able to enjoy themselves. The wardrobe is simple for comfort. And then you have got the, the place where you have to place the box so that now the people who are escorting you, our staff will bring their, uh, your staff up to here. Coming back into the bathroom, the bathroom is simple, and for the standard room again, we have got uh, only the shower. It's only the shower we have got. Uh, the others are the standard things, the wash and basin, and the, the loo. The executive room, we've got uh, a couple of them, not too many, we've got only four. The executive room is larger and uh, with a chair, which we have added here, uh, on top of the uh, coffee table and the uh, dressing table. The bed is equally large. We have got uh, six by six and uh, in some cases actually we have got a six by seven uh, because uh, we don't want to discriminate the, the tall people. They are able to have a longer bed where they can be able to enjoy themselves. But the orientation in terms of furnishings is basically like what I showed you in the uh, standard room. And then what we have here as an extension to this, uh, uh, just what that a bit of extra comfort, we have got the uh, dressing area. So the dressing table is here and uh, sliding uh, wardrobes. At the property show, we understand the dynamics of the ever-changing real estate sector. So working with Fast Avenue ensures the process is swift and stress-free. Visit our offices and we'll be delighted to make the first step together. Technology is changing the real estate sector. At the just concluded Realtors Expo, we caught up with iBuild, a mobile platform allowing customers to locate suppliers, compare prices and verify on-site delivery of materials. Let's hear more.
iBuild is an end-to-end -end platform that facilitates the people who are doing construction. On it, you're able to get contractors, you're able to get suppliers, you're able even to get uh, workers if you're a contractor. And basically, we are connecting the ecosystem. And that's part of the issues that have been for the people who are doing their homes themselves. So iBuild is a mobile app platform currently that you're able to do the whole process with transparency, with accountability, and even efficiency. We have systems in place, some of it are automated, others we actually use, you know, users themselves to even give a rating system. For example, for a contractor, you'll see that uh, uh, once a contractor registers, if they have an NCA number, the input and we auto verify through the public portal of NCA. So you'll be able to see a badge, NCA verified. But you and me agree that at times people have those certification, but what they're able to deliver is something else. So we have an extra layer of a rating system that the consumers themselves, the market itself, is able to rate, and that in itself will bring more of transparency. You do not now rely only just on the certification, but what are the kind of services these people are able to offer. So what we've done is the reviews are really tied on a live project. I cannot just come and be rated. Uh, if I'm a customer, I come search for a contractor, eventually I'll be able to select the best because I'll have several of them sending in quotations. So I will not only just check on the financial aspect, I'll have a chance to check into their profile. Is the NCA registered or not? Is he a member of a federation like Kenya Federation of Master Builders or not? Then most importantly, what does the market say about him? What's the rating? So this rating, we've tied it to what we call completed milestones. And when he completes a milestone and requests for payment, that's when now the customer rates him before releasing the funds. So in that kind of a sort uh, way, we've been able to manage a way whereby you really get a rating that is in line with what I feel as a customer. But I also need to mention this, for that whole process to work because it's tied on payment, we have a mobile embedded, uh, we call it a digital wallet, iBuild digital wallet, that comes and you know, protects both ends. You're able to approve a merchant as a customer for somebody to go on site and commit funds in an escrow functionality. So once the guy is done, he will request for payments and then I will be able to release funds from my wallet. So we've tied it there so that I cannot just be able to go and get some you know, writing from my friends. It's tied to some live projects. You realize the ecosystem is very different, different pain points. If you begin with the homeowner, the homeowner's the problem is how can I get a professional contractor? How can I be able to manage and even release payment for work done? So in that space, you see what you're able to do for the homeowners is they can be able to view profiles. They can be able to ascertain before they get somebody on board. Once you have somebody on board on your projects, now the app becomes a tool, monitoring tool, whereby you're able to tie progress and payments. On the contractor side, it has a different you know, a value proposition. For them, their pain point is, how do I get open jobs? So they're able to check in for open tenders. How can I be able to market myself? Remember the profile? So the profile is another way for you to really be visible out there and even showcase the kind of work you're able to do because even the project photos history are able to be actually embedded on that profile. The most important thing also, at times they get jobs away from their area of operation. So they need to mobilize for these sites to get the fundies, the workers. So how do I do that? What we've done is we've been able to do digitally a way they post jobs Describe the job, uh, the skill that is needed, the rate that they are going to pay, running from which day to which day, and workers, masons, carpenters, with their phones as basic as Amuli Kamwizi. We have a version of a USSD code where they apply, go for open jobs, they see all jobs that are posted, apply, and the contractors from the other side they're able to see their profile, where they worked before, how they were rated. Again, the rating system comes in place, and that's how we are really connecting that. So for them, they're able now to hire uh, for workers, and when they've hired, the other problem comes, how do they manage them on site? How do they manage their payment? They're able to run timesheets, 
so that they no longer carry you know cash to sites and, and and most of them if they have several projects how do i be able to you know process my payment across and pay these people promptly and accurately so we're able to help them hire and manage timesheets process payments each worker will be able to receive their payment through their digital wallet this is a kenyan solution born in kenya developed in kenya now going out in the world it will be very unfortunate if Kenyans do not take advantage of this. So right now we have it on the Play Store. Just search for I Build Kenya. You'll be able to download the app and there you have, you create your accounts. If you're a material supplier, if you're a homeowner, if you're a contractor, if you're a fundi, a, a skilled worker, you can be able to do that. But more importantly, we feel like this is the chance to really have the power to really be in charge of your projects. And the more we participate in that kind of a you know, platform, the more we are making, you know, the industry more robust, more transparent, more issues accountability, and even more efficiency. So let's all participate in building a vibrant housing ecosystem that can give alternative to the 80% of Kenyans who do it themselves. Not everybody has uh, the, the opportunity to really go the developer module way. Many of people do it themselves, but how do they navigate through? iBuild is the perfect solution for you. It helps you to really go through the process with less pain. I must say, tech is the way to go, connecting people with the construction supply chain. We are taking a short break. When we come back, we'll catch up with locally made rugs and toilet seat covers on the accessories port. We'll also highlight other investment options available in the market. Keep it property show, there's so much more ahead. solution from Mabati Rolling Mills. Welcome back. You're watching The Property Show. Today we are looking at trends shaping the Mount Kenya region. During the just concluded Realtors Expo, we caught up with artists making rugs and toilet seat covers plus much more. Let's listen in. Spinners and Weavers is a self-help group for the women and it was started in 1977 to help the single mothers or the reliant women. Uh, that's why the project was open, so the women can be able to support their kids, also to uh, support themselves. Uh, when it was open, it was having six women, but now we are 107 women whom are just relying on that project. So in here, we have some women that they are doing the work 
and this is our raw material all from cheap. This is our raw material all from cheap. We have to go uh, to the farmers. We buy all from the rock of farmers and after that we have to cut it as she's doing. She's brushing or cutting the wool. So when spinning it will be easier. So after she had cut the wool, you can see now the difference between uh, the uncutted one and the one we have already brushed. So from there, uh, we have to spin it as the readers are she is spinning. She is spinning fine yarns for making shorts or scarves. Fine ones are for the shorts that she's spinning. Also, uh, and after spinning, this is a bobbin that holds the yarns. From there, she is making a thread like this one. Uh, from there, we have another reader over here, spins yarns for the carpets. You can see now the difference between the fine ones and the thicker ones. This, we call it a drop speeder machine. Uh, it helps us to spin the thicker ones. Uh, and this machine, she can go with it at home where that she's caring for their kids. So she just care, take the raw material, she processes it at home where they are just caring for their small kids, then they bring the finished products. And now these are the thicker ones. So after spinning, we have to wash the yarns with warm water and one, five times and the sixth time we put the soap. After washing for 10 times, you can see the, the result. You see? That is the result of the after washing. You see? So from there, after washing and the hands are clean like this one, we have to weave it. She's weaving the carpets or the lugs. Uh, and after spinning the lug, it will be like this one. You see? Now this you can use it as a table mat or a wall hanging. See? This is a carpet or a table mat. Also we have the shelves, which is this one. And our dyes are all natural. Because our dyes we use plants in spinning and weaving projects. We use dye plants like mint, Mexican marigold, black jack, or cactus. And all those plants give us different colors as we have them on the table. And after that, we have to go and put them in a showroom where we sell our carpets. promoting these uh, toilets, covers, because uh, they are like, uh, you know, like the latrines that are everywhere. So because of the, like, like especially for us women, when you go to use these things, there's flies and all these things, so they usually transmit a lot of diseases. So we came up with this uh, toilet cover thing. You don't even have to demolish the toilet that you have because it fits really well in the previous toilet. Whenever you're using it, this toilet, like if even if you put water right now, this flap will just open and then it will just close afterwards by itself. So this one will be beneath the nini, like uh, you can see from the pictures. Yeah, it will be flushed completely. So this one are for the ones which are chini. This one even has uh, something for opening actually. So if you pull this one, it just opens by itself and then it closes. So it's very good for kids who are very afraid of going to the latrines and all that. They just sit on it. I'm at the elderly, I'm at the sick. So it's very good for, and it's very hygienic and very affordable. So this is the 1200 one, and the other one is the 600 one.
I must say, it's little things that make our homes feel inviting and comfortable. And on the accessories spot, we've got you covered with tips to consider to make your home beautiful. Moving on, let's shift our focus to home ownership with a tale of investing in the sector and tips to consider before signing the dotted line. Nabosa Housing is a circle owned by Boda Boda Riders in Nanyuki. We started in the year 2011 as a circle. Then uh, in the year 2014, uh, then we registered the Nabosa Housing Cooperative. Kwa hi housing yetu, uh, Nabosa Housing, we have uh, 140 members. Uh, na kwa hi project yetu about to meanza hapa, uh, we have 120 uh, registered members about what own uh, the project. In the year 2014, uh, kuna tagazo ama habari ipoti ilikuja kwa news tukaona vijana wa boda boda kule kitegera wakiwa mejega nyumba zao uh, from there uh, we decided ya kwamba tutaweza kuwatembelea tusome na wao like ya county government waliweza kutusponsor wakatupeleka kule tukaweza kusoma na wao for two days then from there we decided ya kwamba tutakuja kufanya the same thing here in Laikipia. I told you we registered our circle in 2011. Then we stayed for three years with 300, uh, 300 members. Uh, and in three years, we had only managed to save 80,000 only with the 300 members. Uh, then uh, 40,000 from the total was owned by one person. So the 40,000, you require 299 members. So wakati tuliona hii kitu inametegeteka uh, kitegera tulitaka kujua na shida yetu ni nini. So tukataka kuenda kule kitegera after the, after after kitegera the benchmarking tuka decide ya kwamba na sisi tutaanza ile hali ya saving. As we, we came back tukasema ya kwamba sisi tutakuwa tuna save 50 shilling per day towards the project. But first of all before tuingie kwa project lazima kwanza to get empower ourselves kwa saving. Tukaanza ku save uh, the 50 shilling per day per member. Then we saved for one one year. From there, tukasema ya kwa, tukaona ya kwa ba tumeanza, tumeweza kupeana maloans na pesa siko nyingi kwa account yetu. Sasa, tukakubuka sasa maono yenye tuliona kitegera. Now, there we decided ya kwa ba tutaanza kutafuta shaba, tiyo tuweze kujega nyumba zetu. Lakini, kutoka wakati ule, tukajua ya kwamba tukiwa pamoja tunaweza kupata kile ambacho tunahitaji na tuipata kwa haraka so tumekuwa tuki encourage wa members wakuwa wana save kila wakati but uh, uh, si wote ambao walipata ule mwito uh, even uh, kutoka kwa benchmarking si wote wengine wetu walitoka hata yule mtu alikuwa na 40000 alitoka tukabaki na 40000 peke yake then tukaanza hapo uh, then from there wengine wakatoka bado wengine wakaigia wapya Lakini for now, tunaweza sema ya kwamba tumeenda hatu wa nyingi bere because hata membership inweza ku increase out of what we are doing. Uh, I told you we started saving 50 shillings from uh, November 2014. We saved uh, for three months uh, the, the, the 50 shillings. That is the minimum. Then uh, from there, tukaona ya kwamba tumefikisha pesa tunaweza donulia wenze tu kwanza motobike. Tuka donulia watatu motobike za kwanza. Hiyo hili tujega sana sababu hili tuuza kwa, kwa, kwa wananchi ya kwamba tunafanya kitu ya maana. From there, tuka ededa kusafe kidogo. By mid-2015, uh, tulikuwa ina possession ya kuweza kulease the deposit ya, ku, ya, 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 ya hii shaba. The cost of this land is 7 million because it is 6 acres. Na eka moja tulikuwa tunanunua na 1.2. Uh, then to sababu wakati tulieda kitegera kuna mabu wabawa tulifunzo na wale vijana wakati wabia ya kwaba hawakuweza kumanage kufanya hiyo kazi yote on the year own walipati na na, na nachu national housing of cooperation na sisi tukaweza ku approach nachu tukawabia tukona hii maono tukona hii pesa na tukona haa watu na tukipeta kufanya vile tuliona kitegera so walitukubali wakatupatia kodijon sao 
the accommodation in Yakoba, you raise the 20% of the required amount, including here allowed. Kama Shaba in Atoka 7 million, you raise 20%. Then now I want to facilitate na, uh, the, the 80%. So we did the same to Kawaita, to Kalijesta Nawa, to Kawapatia the 20%, Wakakuja Wakatunia Shaba yetu, ya 7 million. Then Ikifika Wakatu wa construction to to reverse kupata the, the structure zile nyumba zenye tunataka wakafanya the drawings then tukajua the the costing uh, the, the, the total cost of the, the the building the same case tukafanya tukalis the 20% the 20% ndio waweze kutujegea so we did it then wakaanza kutujegea right now uh, mahali hapo unaona nyumba zetu zimefika ni wao wamefanya hiyo kazi sisi tume raise only 20% the other 80% tuta, tutalipa after mutu wakiigia kwa nyumba yaki. Mimi nilijua ni naposa Sako. In 2014, wakati ile grupu ilikuwa imetumwa kitengera iludi na good news. Nilikuja nyanyuki in 2002. 20, 20 na kutoka hiyo wakati nimekua nikiishi nyumba ya rento. Na sasa wakati nilisikia tunajegewa nyumba nilifurahi sana kwa sababu nilijua nitatoka kwa nyumba ya rento. Bahari hii nyumba ziko kutoka town sio bari. Hata unajua nikiingia hapa najua for example nimeishi kwa Rad Road for more, more than 20 years. Nikikosa kulipa nyumba mwezi moja na kuja anifata kuja anifuki. Hakuna wakati Rad Road atakuwa bia asante. Lakini nikiingia hapa nikilipa hii nyumba hakuna mtu hatawahi kunipishia hiyo mlango akiniishi akini it is a rent. So hiyo ni kitu moja inaniweka moral. After five years, kulipa hiyo nyuba, hakuna mtu tutaulizana na hee. Have you been dreaming of owning a home? Always remember to work with professionals from the onset to make your home ownership journey seamless. If you're looking to get in onto the property ladder, we'll be happy to guide you to start the journey with professionals. Next, other investment options available in the market. Katani Villas is an ideal gated community consisting of 82 units of four and six bedroom units that cuts across all spheres of prospective homeowners with stylish architectural design for living. Accommodation features include spacious living area with large windows letting in natural light and wood flooring, adding that it factor as well as warmth. Separate spacious dining area with an open plan concept allowing for ease of access to the rest of the house. Fully fitted kitchen with an oven, hob and extractor as well as cabinets for storage. Spacious master ensuite bedroom with a walk-in closet as well as grand bathroom with a shower cubicle. A balcony, a guest room on the lower level, a common cloakroom for guests, utility area with adobe sink and washing machine provisions. Other features in the development include perimeter wall with electric fence and 24-hour manned gate for security, borehole and Athi view municipal water supply with an additional 2,000 litre attic domestic water storage, solar water heating systems, two parking slots per house and additional parking spaces for guests, cab repaved driveways, generator power backup for communal areas, social hall that will include a swimming pool, gymnasium and community shop. Book while the special offer for 12 million Kenya shillings is still on offer. Mavoko Park is located in a gated community. Each missionette is beautifully designed with four and five bedrooms. Accommodation includes spacious living room and dining room, fitted kitchen with detached pantry, 
spacious ensuite master bedroom with walk-in closet, common bathroom with shower, family room, panoramic balcony, and Dolby area with provisions for washing machine. Salient features include private garden, provision for exterior gas tank storage, carbon paved driveways, underground and overhead water tanks, boundary wall with electric fence, borehole water system, mini shopping center, solar water heater, and advanced system for cable TV and internet. At First Avenue, we have an array of properties across board on every price point. Let's know what you're looking for and we'll help you locate it. If you're looking to put your money in the Mount Kenya region, you can't go wrong with long and short stay rental investments as well as site and service land schemes. I must say, real estate in this region has a positive outlook driven by devolution, positive demographics and improving infrastructure. That's it for today. Join me next week for an interesting feature addressing green building principles from design, choice of materials, all the way to space optimization. plus insights on investment opportunities inspiring a new investment cycle. Till next week, as always, there is something for everyone. Kwaheri!